I'm going to say this with some confidence. This might be one of the best deals you ever see in Football Manager. DP has gone to Stuttgart. Didn't score a goal for us last year. Got one assist in 15 games. Signed for 7.75 million. We've managed to flog him for 9.5 million. I think I'm a genius. And in fact, since last transfer special episode, we've done a little bit of whirling and dealing. We'll talk about that and more, as well as get into the first of two games today. Schalke and Union Berlin await. Let's get right into things. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Rebuilding Berlin. You might be able to hear it in my throat. My voice is starting to go. So we're going to try and get this video out to the end of the week and then hope that over the weekend, my voice gets better because I sound awful. One thing that doesn't sound awful, though, is the money that we got for Filippo Mane. Guess how much I got for him. Go on, go on, have a guess down in the comments. Of course, we have replaced him with Bullets this year, who is coming in to be our new right back option. And I think when you compare the two players, it's pretty clear that Bullet is clear. He was signed for £7.75 million. I managed to sell Mane for £10 million to her to Berlin. Now, don't get me wrong. It's uh, a good squad player, Mane. I don't feel like he's a £10 million good squad player. So I was pretty happy to get that money. So those are the two sales made since last episode. We have brought a couple of new faces into the team. The first, a player I brought in really to solve the conundrum that was the right back position with Mane leaving the club. We have brought in and bomb. This guy, slightly more versatile than Mane, can play centre mid, can play right back, can play left back, could play in the wide mid. He's never going to play there. And whilst this guy isn't quite as good defensively, I think he's a very, very comparable player. And we got him for £3.5 million, which as far as I'm concerned, for a player who has not missed many Bundesliga games over the last few seasons, that's a bargain. Alongside him, I did opt to bring in a couple of youngsters with the surplus money we had. The first, Gazina here, signed from Feyenoord over in the Netherlands. £7 million paid. He is going to be playing with our second team, a player with bags of potential, some question marks, I guess, over his inconsistency and injury proneness. But if he stays fit, he looks like he could have the makings of a really good winger. And the other youngster we picked up is Kostas Leonidopoulos. Uh, Kostas, we'll call him Kostas. Let's keep it simple. Signed from Mainz, he's gone back on loan to Mainz. Four million pounds paid. Gonna get some regular Bundesliga two football, hoping he can develop a little bit. Looks like he could be a useful centre-back down the line. And for £4 million, can't really go wrong. So alongside those transfers, pre-season has wrapped up. We have actually played two competitive games. The first of those was in the DFB Pokal, where we took on Saarbrücken. In this game, Junior Adamu was superb. Gruder grabbed two, of course, playing lower league opposition. We should be winning. I was tempted to rotate the team, but really I wanted to, you know, give our new toy of a starting eleven a whirl. I wanted to play the best eleven, see what they could do. And while they scored five... Conceding three is a little bit concerning. I'm going to put it down to complacency in the second half. We also opened up our Bundesliga campaign with a win against Leverkusen. This goal here, one of the weirder ones, Junior Adamu opening his goal-scoring account for the season in the league. Yeah, weird goal. Perhaps the pick of the bunch, though. It wasn't exactly a game for bangers. Kameri got a goal. Zonarek as well got two goals on off the bench. Is this man about to turn into a super sub? Last year, he didn't do a great deal for us. This year... Two goals off the bench already? My expectations are elevated. Anyway, we have got two games coming your way today. We're going to do away days for both of them. With that in mind, we're going to get straight into this first one. It is Schalke, one of Dortmund's big rivals. I would love to beat them. To do that, we are going to have to head to the Veltins Arena and get a result. So for today's away day, we are heading down the road from Dortmund to, oh, Gelsenkirchen. Definitely said that correctly. Not far away from us, of course, Schalke are one of our big rivals, and presumably somewhere around here is a football stadium. And I have found a football stadium. It was a little bit hidden. Couldn't see the pitch. It's under a roof. Here is the Veltins Arena. Next to the pitch, grass. Love grass me. But more importantly, a triangular car park. I don't know what the significance of it being triangular is. Reminds me of Doritos. Around the stadium, more parking. Love park. This is one of the best parking away days so far. And pitches. Lots and lots of pitches. You can have a kick about here before the game, maybe. I imagine these are gated off and you can't actually go on them. Oh, my word. They have even more parking on this side as well. Someone knew I was coming. Schalke, you're rolling out the red carpet for me. Okay, we've not had a hot streak when it comes to actual street view for stadiums. Good news today. We're going to get some. And first things first. I want to look at the car park. How does the car park look? Here it is. Painted lines, numbered lines, beautiful trees, and a white van. 
Nothing suspicious about a white van on its own in the car park. In terms of the stadium itself, I'm going to level with you. Uh, it looks slightly generic from the outside, but at the same time, it's just nice to actually be able to view a, a stadium from the outside and actually be able to go all the way around it. We can do a lap of the stadium and... If nothing else, it looks different to every other stadium I remember on a, an away day. Massive glass walls, stairwells protruding out from the ground. I'm a fan. As for the stadium itself, here she is. It's got a retractable roof, a massive display on the middle. Love that. That's very American sports, I feel like. And in terms of the actual kind of look of the ground, yes, it's a little bit symmetrical and a little bit generic, but it has... A good energy. I, I, I mean, maybe it's just the car park going to my head. It feels quite cosy and intimate. I feel like that's the best way to describe it. I love the arching roof. It looks very impressive. Schalke, I hate to say this because you're one of our rivals. This has been one of the better away, away days in Germany so far. Maybe I'm losing my head like this guy in front. I really, really like this stadium. There's loads of reasons I shouldn't like it, but it just feels quite different to anything I've ever seen before. And also the car parking. I mean, I got told that Germany doesn't do car parking. It doesn't need car parking. Schalke didn't get the memo. Okay, the Veltins Arena, I have to give you a score. It doesn't even really look like a football stadium from the outside, does it? But big, big fan. Love the surrounding area as well. Not just the car parking, but also loads of just trees, green grass, swimming pools. Why does every... Football stadium in Germany have a swimming pool next to it. There must be a reason. I digress. Veltins Arena, I'm giving you a beyond respectable 7.25 out of 10. The 2.5 is important. Okay, away day graded. Let's get into this game today. In terms of starting 11, one little bit of news. Vitaly Becker got a little bit of an injury. With that in mind, Arian B comes in at left wing back. Taruna Riga is going to be playing in the heart of the defence alongside Omobamidele. Bullet is going to make his live commentary debut at right back. In the midfield, it's not changed too much in the centre of things. Adriano, Kameri and Killy, all players here last year. But out on the left, not so. The £60 million pound man yet to score in his first Bundesliga game. Maybe it'll be second time lucky for him. As for our other new addition in the final third, Adamu, he's been sensational so far. Goal and an assist in his first Bundesliga game. Two goals in the cup. Let's see if he can keep his hot streak to start the season going now. Okay, this should really be the bigger game of the episode. For the, for the Dortmund fans, I'm sure it is. For me, I'm thinking about the Union Berlin game after this one against our former club at home, desperately hoping we can get a result there. But really, we need to take it a game at a time. We are playing in our neon green kit, and for a second, I thought Notto was about to find the top bins. Do still have a corner here. Gruder, plenty of assists last year, yet to get an assist, I feel like, this year in the Bundesliga. Until now, he whips it in a Taruna Riga on his live commentary debut. He's sorting out his shin pads, an orthodox celebration. He breaks the deadlock, and it is the two former Union men linking up ball back post. Taruna Riga, surrounded by three men. He towers above them. He looks like a giant amongst mortals. And he's found the back of the net. Half an hour played here. Not exactly been a classic, but having got our noses ahead, we're limiting their opportunities. We're having a fair amount of the ball as well, which as the away team is always nice, of course. What's even nicer is goals. And I do feel like to get the result here, we're probably going to need more than just the one goal. Gruder working hard at the back to win the ball back. He lays it to Bullet, Adriano, Kameri. Ball being knocked around by us with a little bit of confidence here, trying to play in Adamu in behind. Ampadu gets there, but Gruden nods it down the line, and we're going to give chase. We're going to press. We're going to try and force a turnover in possession. Schalke play out from that initial press really, really nicely. Amduni now, breaking with the ball through the middle, plays it straight to Arian B. Wilfred Notto for £60 million with an atrocious touch, and now maybe a little bit of defending needed to be done here. Dario breaking in behind. Omobamidele. Stuck out a leg. It was a lazy tackle. It's going to be a penalty. We're going to VAR. I already know what's happening. Uh, Jovic in goal. I hope you can make the stop. Okay, penalty has been awarded. Doku is going to step up. He sends the keeper the wrong way, and it's 1-1. That does feel a tad unjust. They've not created very much in this game, but from the penalty spot, Schalke draw level. Jeremy Doku with the strike. The number seven hits it down to his right. And before halftime, I'm going to get shouty shouty. Is there to be any results from the shouty shoutiness? No. So at halftime, we'll go shouty shouty again. So far in this game, a few disappointing performances in the final third. I was looking at my team the other day, and uh, this could be triggering for some people, just, just as a heads up. But I was sat thinking, could I play Wilfred Notto as like 
a pressing forward on attack with a Damu kind of next to him, asymmetric, and then we play Arian B, or perhaps more normally, Becker, at left wing back. Like, could I do something like this? A bit of an asymmetric 4-3-3. Three, three. And whilst it's 1-1 one, one in this game, I've dreamed up this formation in my head as an idea. It's obviously not a radical departure from what we normally play, but I feel like it could serve us quite well. And you know what? I've dreamt it up. I'm going to give it a whirl now. If I have one concern with this minor tweak in shape, it is the fact that Taruna Riga is not the quickest centre-back and he is the left centre-back covering for the marauding kind of left wing-back. That is something to perhaps have just half an eye on here. But you know what? Football Manager is about experimentation. Last year in the Bundesliga 2, there wasn't much room for that. I feel like we could have played pretty much any shape and had success. This year in the Bundesliga, tactical decision-making is going to be all the more important and with that in mind, trying something new like this in a game where we're struggling to break the deadlock feels not only sensible, but like the kind of thing that's probably going to be required through the season. So giving it a try here early on, seeing if it works, you know, if it does work, maybe it's something that we do on the regular. Maybe it's something that becomes the default. Adamu takes down the ball, goes round the keeper, gets his second goal in two games, and he was having an atrocious first half. Wouldn't know it based off that finish. That was confidence with some swagger. Ball was launched forward towards him. Mama Bamidele laid it out. It was Bullets who got the assist, you might have noted, for the Leverkusen goal that he scored. Bullets got the assist again there. It's launched forward and the number nine, confident little finish at the end of it. Ari and B on a booking, a little bit concerning. Could bring in Becker if needed. Ball played inside. That was not a clean strike by Gruda. I feel like he scuffed it, but it's P rolled into the back of the net. I do question this finish. Did it deflect? Maybe it deflected. The goalkeeping is shocking, but change of system, two goals in seven minutes. Furich for them. Playing the ball all the way back to the goalkeeper. We're pressing, we're causing issues, we're trying to force him to go long. Tarunariga's under it, Bullet is under it as well. He heads it away from danger, but Schalke, plenty of players forward here. Doku finishes it. I think he's offside. If, I, if I'm a linesman, I'm holding out my flag. Is it going to be given? Is it going to be ruled out? The fact he's running away with the ball makes me think he's very confident it is onside. VAR's going to check it. I've held out my flag. And, well, it turns out maybe I'd be a better football manager player than a linesman. The goal is given. It's onside. We'll get confirmation with this replay here. Was he behind the ball? I guess he was. Okay, Arian B's having a good game, but on a booking, I am a little bit concerned. Despite Becker's injury, we can afford, I feel like, to bring him on in this kind of game here. Gruder on a booking is far from ideal. Omabamidele also walk, walk, walking a tightrope. He gave away that penalty earlier. He's in it on a yellow card, so I'm going to take him off. Quick double change. Bookman and Killy. Adriano dinks it. Notto not having a good game so far, but here he has possession. Maybe a chance for him to change his fortunes and our fortunes around Kimeri. Bookman, lovely build-up play. There's a goal at the end of this. It would be superb. It's going to be superb if the goal is given. It's going to VAR. I don't want to make a call after the last one. The last one I thought was offside was given. Is this one going to count? The answer is yes. Adamu, two goals for him, and suddenly... For £20 million, we brought him in because of his Bundesliga goal-scoring calibre. The keeper's come out, doesn't get there. He's on for the hat-trick. Also, you might be able to hear in my commentary, my voice is dying, folks. I need water. It's been a six-goal thriller here. There is 10 minutes left. We've looked good in this game, but I'm going to make some changes. Gruder on a booking, less than ideal. Let's bring in Bino Gittins elsewhere. Nonto's not at a debut to remember in a live commentary. We're going to take him off. Adriano as well off for Zonarek, who got two goals in our previous league game. Made those changes. Absolutely nothing happened. This game here finishes 4-2. Adamu, man of the match. Superb display. Really good defensive performance as well by our team. Lots to take away from that on the positives. Our finishing was good. Didn't create as much as I'd like, but we dominated the game. 60% of the ball away from home. Never going to complain about that. We'll give Adamu some praise after that. He is already looking like the player we thought he was going to be. 17 goals last year in the Bundesliga. Three goals in two games this year already. Okay, Union Berlin is eight days away. We are going to do the away day to our own stadium. Find out what our home ground looks like. It's my first time playing against my former club that I managed. Alex Scott, Tom Kraus, and I'm sure plenty of other familiar faces await. Let's get into that one. Hope we can continue. What's been, so far, a sensational start to the season. Game number two today, we're taking on Union Berlin. But before we get into that, the transfer window is still open. I have made 
another sale. Not sure why I've made that sound so ominous. Anning has left the club. This guy was really our third choice left back. But with us having a couple of left back options in Arian B, Taruna Riga, of course, playing behind Vitali Becker, I don't really feel like this guy has a future at the club. And whilst I wasn't planning on selling him, Werder Bremen offered £5 million pounds plus 50% of any future profits on the next sale, which... I couldn't really turn down. For a player who's got nowhere near the first team last year, is very likely to get anywhere near the first team this year, and with us already having some decent left-back alternatives, yeah, decided to let him go. It does mean with less than a week left of the transfer window, we do have £18 million to spend. Part of me wants to spend it for the sake of it, but when I look at the current state of the first team, probably isn't necessary. Okay, we are going to head to the Vestfallen Stadion. I hope I've said that correctly. I'm not calling it by the sponsor's name. 81,000 seats. I'm going to count them all individually. Let's go do a second away day today. Now, of course, I am fully aware this technically isn't an away day because it's our home stadium, but we've not seen our home stadium yet. I want to know what our house looks like. And here it is in all its glory. No running track on the inside, just next door. Some fantastic parking to the left and sensational pixel art on the roof is this solar panels or is it glass panes i want to believe it's solar panels that they've used to make a logo out of that's very funny either way to have the logo on the roof some football pitches next door tennis courts as well clay tennis courts though nobody liked that um elsewhere around the stadium another swimming pool why does every German football club have a swimming pool next to it this is i mean it is actually a thing now i'm convinced and parking parking more parking uh hockey pitch um yeah i mean you have everything you could ever want the question is though do we have google street view options and <laughs> i can't work out if the pitch hasn't been correctly lined up here with these lines or if a van has indeed just drove through the corner of the stand and we'll find out in a moment let's be real you know this is dortmund stadium right away don't you from the yellow accents on the roof it looks beautiful it looks quite picturesque peeking up above the hedge there is no shortage of dots in and around the stadium. There's loads in the memorabilia shop. I want to go look at memorabilia on my way. It's very yellow. Here is the club shop. It's, uh, yeah, it is yellow. To any of my loved ones watching this video today, I want this lampshade, please. Not sure how a light it would even fit on, but I would just quite like it. Now, there's loads of dots around the entrance to the stadium. It's got my curiosity. Let's have a look inside. What is going on in here? What what is this? Is this is this the entrance? Is this some box area? It looks it looks very swanky, doesn't it? This this looks this looks far too corporate for me. I don't want to be here. I feel out of place. This side of the stadium, I will confess, it does look slightly less glamorous, but I believe we could enter the stadium through here. May or maybe or maybe I'm wrong. Can we enter this? We can enter the stadium through here. We're we're walking out for the first time into our home ground. Here it is. Ah, uh, I do feel like I'm in prison. Don't ask me how I've accidentally ended up in the tunnel. I d I don't feel like I'm meant to be here. I'm going to assume this is the away changing room because either that or there's just a disappointing amount of yellow in here. For the yellow, I mean they have got yellow tiles in the toilet. Okay, I'll let them off. I mean, this stadium has everything. I'm now in a cafe and it's even got yellow, yellow plants. This might be the most color coordinated football club ever. Don't mind me just doing more wandering behind the scenes. Again, don't really feel like I'm meant to be here, but we're just on an adventure. Just, in, just enjoying the vibes. I've ended up in the Hankook box somehow. They have scarfs on every single seat. It looks cozy, but what a view you get of the action. I mean, look at this. Here is a view of the inside of the stadium. I feel sorry for editing Jack. It's been a very chaotic away day whizzing around everywhere. Here is the ground. You've got yellow and black everywhere. And I'm going to be honest, it just looks bloody awesome, doesn't it, this stadium? It looks so, so good. The roof looks absolutely amazing, all lit up with the black and yellow colour scheme. It, it feels imposing. It feels menacing. It feels kind of unique. The roof... This might be a weird analogy. It kind of reminds me of this San Siro roof, just on a slightly smaller scale. I say that, but this stadium holds 80,000 fans in it, which, I mean, it's mad. It's bigger than it looks on the inside. I was looking for drone footage for like an aerial view. Uh, the best I can do before we head to Google Earth is car parking view, where they've even got yellow and black parking numbers. I don't think I'm being biased to say this. This has one of the best away days we've had 
in recent memory. Today's been a great day for the away day enthusiast. Not only just fantastic car parking, we've got tennis courts, football pitches, a stadium with pixel art on the roof. If I was going to be critical, I'd love a bit more of an adventurous patting on the seats on the inside. But in terms of overall experience, I mean, what a ground. We didn't even look at the stadium next door that's just a running track. Then again, don't care about running tracks. Okay, the Vestfall and Stadion, I have to give you a rating. Picturesque location, beautiful car park, stunning interior, great colour scheme throughout. Eight and a half out of ten. There, I said it. That is, is one of the best away days of all time. Having said all of that, what would make this away day even better is if we can go and get a result in this game here. We are playing pretty much a full strength 11 for this game. Vitaly Becker is going to come back into the team now he's fit at left back. I'm keeping a very close eye on Nonto, not had a great start to his adventures in the inside forward position. Given how much success we've had with Gruder inverted winger, would it be stupid to try him as an inverted winger instead? Is it, are inside forwards just bad this year in Football Manager? You know what, we'll experiment. We need to get the most out of him. And like I mentioned last game, I think tactical experimentation throughout this year is going to be the order of the day. Okay, we are matching up against my former club here in Union Berlin. I want to get a result. I need to get a result. In terms of their team, they have got Lucas Nemecha up top. They've loaned him back from Juventus. They sold him for £75 million. They've loaned him back for £2 million. That is very much an art of the deal, isn't it? Elsewhere, Alex Scott, centre attack in mid. Going to have to keep him quiet. They are playing a narrow system, which I was about to say I might need to exploit in the wide areas. Why not exploit it from a corner? Last match, we scored a goal from a corner to the back post. This time, it's a near post car corner, and it's a Damu with it. It's another goal for his collection. The man's on fire. And now Gruder's over another corner. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, never mind. I thought we were about to get two in two. Panda is going to collect for them at the back. Union Berlin away from home, down a goal. And well, so far, the game has been very much in our favour, very much to my liking as well. We're knocking the ball around nicely. They're playing this 4-1-2-1-2, which I think is going to make things difficult through the middle, but in the wide areas with our wing backs getting forward, there's going to be so much space to exploit. And we are doing that there, and we're going to score as a result of it. Kamari makes it 2-0. Vitaly Becker, the number three, he laid it inside. And from there, Adriano, who we signed from Union for 20 plus million pounds, crosses it to Kameri. The two centre mids link up. It's two goals and it's, well, less than 10 minutes played. It could be a long day for Union. Vitaly Becker involved in the first goal, this time out, switching it from one side to the other. Bullet now down the line to Gruder. Plenty of options in the middle. He switches it back to Becker. There is so much space in these wide areas. Our wingbacks are having a lovely time. Nonto could be having a lovely time because he's put the ball into the box and Adabu, he makes it 3-0. I feel like I should feel more conflicted than I do, but at the moment, I've just got this weird sick pleasure I'm feeling watching these goals go in. It could get really embarrassing. Good news if you're an Union Berlin fan, you have now survived the last 20 minutes without conceding. That said, the damage does feel like it's been done here. They are yet to have a shot on target, and we could be on the attack again here. Adamu whips it in, Adriano in the box, falls to Nonto. He was slow to get started, but he has a goal and an assist in this game, and it's 4-0 before the break. Gruder whipping it towards the back post. Taruna Riga's under it. It's cleared away, but only as far as Kameri. He scored a few this year already. Lays it off to Nkili. Loads of players forward. Nonto, one of them, pulls the trigger. Keeper parries it. Not the most convincing of saves. It could have been five. Okay, halftime in this game. We are 4-0 up. We are running rampant. It's been one of the best performances I can remember from this Dortmund team. Just a bit of context here. Going into this game, Union Berlin were two wins for two to start the season. It's not like they're in a poor run of form or anything. They've been great. But in this game here, they have been well and truly humbled. Gruder's in behind. Atamu's there. It's 5-0. It's five. This does feel like a game where in the tactical rock, paper, scissors that can sometimes emerge in Football Manager, we are rock, they are scissors, and we are cutting them open. There's another kickoff highlight. I mean, I'm getting giddy. I want six or seven at this point. We're five nil up. We don't look like we want to let up either. I mean, they've got to, you'd think, get something from this game. You know, a consolation goal for the fans that have made the pilgrimage. They've yet to have a shot on target. They've had one shot so far in this entire game. That said, Widrego is playing it to Alex Scott, and Taruna Riga is caught very flat-footed there. I mean, I knew his pace was an issue. I didn't think he'd forget to run. The ball here by Widrego was a good one, but Taruna Riga, I mean, mate, wake up. Wake up, smell the coffee. Come on, you've got to get going here. That is shocking. 
With an hour played, I'm going to make some subs, but in terms of the final third, I don't really want to make any changes there. We'll bring in Bookman. I'm going to bring in Ari and B as well for Taruna Riga. Why not sub both our centre-backs at 5-1 up? I didn't mention it at the time. I didn't, I didn't know it was at the time. Adamu's got a hat-trick in this game. He's got six goals in his first three games for the season. He could get a fourth or fifth the way this game's been going. Bullets battling away. The number two gets hacked from behind, but still, we press. Still, we try to force a turnover here. Arakovic inside to Nemecha. He's dispossessed. Kamari wins it. Nonto's to his left. He's going to pick out the Italian Stallion, who's going to smash it home for his second goal and our sixth. It does go without saying at this point, uh, Nonto going to be keeping him as an inverted winger rather than an inside forward because it's worked quite well in this one. Four minutes left of this game. I think this is, well, I was going to say, I think this is going to finish 6-1. Another highlight. Don't take your seat. It's not over. There's still added time to be added on as well, although I'm sure Union Berlin are hoping it's just zero minutes. They just want the full-time whistle to go here. Nonto down the line to Vitali Becker. Players queuing up in the middle. Becker whips it in. Adamu's there. It's his fourth of the game. Vitali Becker and Bullet have had the freedom of the city in this game in the wingback areas. They've been able to get forward. The fullbacks of Union Berlin have tracked our inverted wingbacks inside. It's left so much space in the wide areas. And Adamu, who's not too shabby in the air, he's been pulling the lines. He's been scoring goals for fun. He's got four here. He's got a 10.0 rating. Nonto's got a 9.8. And... I said the last game was one of the best I've ever seen us play. This is even better. We have been sensational here. I mean, at this point, three games played plus 11 goal difference. A dismantling of an Union Berlin team predicted to finish fourth. Am I naive and stupid for thinking that we could be in for a title fight this year? Am I naive and silly for thinking Champions League football should be the aim at this point? because it's certainly where my head's at. Getting deja vu here. Adamu going to just praise your performance again. He's got three man of the matches, I think, in three games to start the season. Yeah, yeah, he has. That is stupendous. No idea why I said stupendous so seductively there, but I hope you enjoyed. And well, of course, I also hope you enjoyed today's episode. My voice is so close to going, we're going to end things here. Hopefully it's back for Monday. If there's no video on Monday, just assume that my voice completely died. Until then, though, Hopefully we'll win a few more games. Maybe there'll be some late transfers in the transfer window and we will be doing more of the same action to kick off next week. Hopefully see you guys then. Leave a like as always. Have a lovely weekend. It's me, Jack. I'll see you all again next time. I'm out.